going on guys back at it with another video here on the channel so for those of you guys who don't know i just recently finished doom 2016 and for those of you guys who follow the channel knows that as soon as i'm done with a video game here as far as the let's play goes i do my thoughts on said video game or the video game that i had just completed here on the channel in this case is doom 2016 so quick spoiler i like this game but the way I format this is not so much as a review, it's just a quick my thoughts on the game that I just completed. But I break it down into two portions, and that's basically the positives and then the negatives of the game. So first things first, let's get on with the positives. So first things first, the gameplay itself, the movement speed feels so fluid. It's so smooth, so so fast paced, it just creates this illusion that the game is very fast. And it really is fast as a matter of fact, but it makes it feel faster than what it actually is. And that's mainly done because of the, uh, the movement and I guess you can say the AI of the actual enemies and stuff. They keep you on your toes, they're constantly moving and attacking you creating this illusion that because you have to keep moving and they're always in your face, it makes it feel faster than what it actually is. Now that by no means is a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. It creates the illusion that the game is running faster than what it really is doing. If you eliminate all of the enemies and then you try to move around the arena, it kind of feels slower and that's because the enemy the enemies are not pressuring you to f make it feel like it's a lot faster. Again, that's a good thing. It's it creates this illusion where like if you're in combat it makes it feel fast and fluid and and really you know hardcore but when you're not in combat it feels a little bit slower making you or giving you the 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 time to relax a little bit take a quick breather search for any secrets that might be lurking around the corner which pretty much every area in the game pretty much has something to hide so that's something to keep note of so another thing to go on with the whole positives in the game uh, and, and of course combat and all that stuff the glory kills are freaking fantastic man I've never run never once performed a glory kill that I just didn't feel satisfied doing every single time I did a glory kill it was just amazing like going up to a mancubus for example performing a glory kill taking his heart out of his chest and then feeding it to him is just priceless this is one of the things that I love the most about the game and it just it, it's just so satisfying to perform glory kills and not to mention that it does give you things in return by doing you know some of these things like health and you know doing your chainsaw for example gives you uh, ammo in return so performing these glory kills and using your chainsaw and things of that nature actually are to your benefit as uh, alongside with it just looking you know aesthetically amazing and gra and gratifying and you know satisfying i should say but with that being said that kind of goes along with uh going back to another point and that is the enemy ai the ai is so on point and a lot of the variation of the enemies which again there's a lot of variation of enemies between you know imps possessed cyber demons cyber mancubus regular mancubus uh, you know and revenants which i have one right behind me uh it's just awesome the variation but the ai itself is what i want to really focus in on because every single enemy type has its own i guess you could say thing that they're special in for example the imps are notorious at throwing fireballs at you whereas hell knights are always constantly in your face and you know attacking you and keep the pressure going keeping you on your toes and keeping you movement uh, keeping you moving which is literally what makes the game feel so fast-paced and i personally love the variation with the ai and it's just it's just great along with the whole you know gameplay itself i really have to emphasize the level design the level design is just spectacular and i think where it gets a little bit better as far as aesthetics goes is when you finally get into hell and go into all of the the different locations within hell and stuff not to say that you know mars or anything like that is not satisfying because it is pretty amazing or if you're in one of the uac areas it's always gratifying it's always amazing to see aesthetically but for personally speaking i loved watching the whole different parts of hell specifically 
when you had like nods to some of like Doom 1 and Doom 2, like the giant head or the skull in, I, f I forget which level it was, but and it was pay essentially paying homage to Doom 2, I believe it was. And it just it's just amazing to see it recreated with obviously new engine graphics and things of that nature. It just feels amazing to see. But along with all of that, one of the cool things about this game and its level design is all of the secrets and collectibles. As I said before, almost every single location that you go in this game has some sort of a secret. If you just have to, you know, you just have to like look at your map and see what's on the map and stuff like that. And on top of that, like, uh, it's, it's really cool that if you look hard enough, you'll stumble upon a secret. And those secrets are always amazing to see. Specifically, some of the collectibles, like the little Doom guys. Every single time I get one of those collectibles, the little Doom guys, I just love and adore. My favorite, of course, is the Fall... Or uh, what's it called? The, the Fallout guy or... vault -Tec guy or whatever. I can't... I don't even remember his name. But... And that's mainly because Fallout is my favorite you know series of all time so of course the fact that it's in doom it's gonna be my favorite a close second is patriot guy by the way alongside with all of that a lot of the times in those secrets you'll actually be given a gun that is one level ahead of time and you know what it just feels amazing to get like a chain gun one level early and this is done actually quite often almost every single time you're about to get a gun uh, in you know a level you're giving the opp you're given the opportunity to get that gun one level early in the form of a secret so if you look hard enough you can actually get like your plasma cannon or or your you know your chain gun or anything like that or even you know your super shotgun you can get all of those early if you look hard enough within those secrets and I think that's pretty awesome all in itself so another thing that I absolutely love and adore is the music. I don't think I've ever heard anything from anyone say anything negative about Doom. It just works so, about the Doom music, it just works so great with the gameplay itself. So hardcore and everything. And I'm just not going to put it in this video because I want you to go experience it for yourself. Because it's a diff, it's, it's just, it feels so much better listening while you're playing and controlling and, you know, I guess you could say kicking ass uh, while listening to like heavy metal and stuff like that. It's just freaking awesome. And maybe I'm a little biased when it comes to that stuff because although I do love and appreciate music, I am, you know, a rocker at heart. And this is just, I, you couldn't, you just basically could not have picked a better soundtrack for the game. So if you haven't listened to it, Definitely click on uh, the playlist and you guys will be able to listen to any one of the missions, you know, audio or uh, music. And I promise you won't be disappointed. But that's not the end of this video. So the last positive that I want to emphasize is one that's literally in your face the entire time. And that is you or Doom Guy. Doom Guy in this game is an absolute badass. From the very, very second you're introduced to him... And you're over here, you know, destroying all these possessed and you go up to a computer and you talk to, I can't remember if it's either Samuel or Vega. I want to say it's Samuel, but he tries to explain to you, uh, what they're doing and stuff. And Doom Guy literally grabs the computer, shoves it aside, kind of like, screw you, I do what I want type of thing. That moment in itself is so important in my opinion, because it sets the stage for the entire game to come. And that is, you don't tell Doom Guy what to do because he does whatever he wants to do. And there's nothing you could do that's going to change his mind because he is just an absolute badass through and through. And I love that. There's no real character, you know, development in here because all he is is a badass. And that's literally all you need to know. But with that being said, the game isn't perfect, at least to my experience. And I do want to talk about some of the negatives that I've encountered here in this game, Doom 2016. And a quick spoiler alert, they weren't even that bad, in my opinion. So that just gives more homage at how much of a great game this is. But like I said, the game itself did have its problems. Uh, or its questionable parts, if you will. For one, 
personally speaking, you might your your mileage may vary when it comes to this point, but I felt like the game storyline goes was a little long. If they would have taken like two or three missions off of the game, made it like ten missions, and then have a few bonus missions where they're like almost optional, or whatever or just maybe made individual levels just a little bit longer i think that would have felt a little better instead of dragging it on for 13 whole missions but at the same time me saying that is almost unfair because i enjoyed every minute of this game so it's like it's it's kind of like one of those situations where i'm like torn between or like stuck between a hard place and a rock and i don't know which one i prefer but regardless i think they made a great decision you know, in playing out the way they played it out. But uh, uh, a negative, if you even want to call it a negative, is the story. The story is very bland, very, I guess, generic. Um, and I don't even want to say that it's necessarily a bad thing because this is 100% a mindless shooter game where your entire purpose is just, just to run around and kill demons. And in that respect, it did an A++++++ and there's no complaints there. However, the story was a little bland. But again, it's not even a big deal to me because I, that's not why I played Doom. So, there's that. The next couple of things that I want to talk about are, are actual legitimate... Well, really quick, before I get the last two, I do want to make a quick thing, whatever. I did have a situation in, I want to say, um, Advanced Research Complex, which is, I believe, Mission 8. So, Video 8 here on my on my playlist. If you guys want to watch that video, just click on video eight and you'll be able to see it for yourself. But I had a situation where uh, you're playing uh, or you're fighting against a cyber mancubus and uh, in this arena area. And right, at, right before I'm about to kill him, he falls through the ground and kills himself. So obviously it's a bug and stuff, but it wasn't game breaking by any means. It was just one of those things where it just kind of left my head scratching like, uh, where did he go? where obviously he just fell to the ground and died on his own. But I think it's important for me to state in this video because I did experience that bug and by no means was it game breaking. So moving on to the last couple of things that I really do need to talk about because I felt like they were valid criticisms of the game in my personal opinion, and that is the bosses. Not that they were bad by any means. As a matter of fact, I actually loved the bosses, but there's only three and I think they could have fit like one or two more bosses early on in the game uh, because if you play the game organically from start to finish through all 13 missions there's only three bosses and they're all at the very very end and uh, to wait that long to get into a boss I think is I think they could have put some bosses a little earlier, in my opinion, or even create a new demon for a boss just for the purpose of you getting used to fighting a demon or a, a, a you know a boss fight or something like that. Because the first boss that you fight, I believe, is not till mission ten, like nine or ten or something like that, where you fight the cyber demon, and that cyber demon is an absolute badass. By the way, I just want to emphasize that because I love the cyber demon in this game. He is amazing. But it's it, you have to wait a long time before you get to those boss fights. And like I said, there's only three. There's the Cyber Demon, the Hell, the Hell Guards, and of course the Spider Mastermind. Which, by the way, the first two are seriously badass. The 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 Cyber Demon and of course the Hell Guards. But the Spider Mastermind, although it was a pretty cool you know boss in itself. I felt it was kind of underwhelming because the cyber ma uh, mastermind was actually kind of easy and by that time you're so overpowered that it's not much of a challenge. I died once but that was mainly because of my own personal mistakes. You can watch the videos for the video for yourself. When I came back I ended up killing the spider mastermind with no problem. Um, and honestly that's probably my only thing. I don't want to say anything bad per se about the spider mastermind because it wasn't a bad you know boss design it was just it's one of those situations where by the time you get to that point you're so overpowered that almost nothing can take you on and that's the feeling that i got from the spider mastermind but again it wasn't a bad design it was just you're overpowered at that point and it just wasn't that challenging in the end but again the bosses, all three of them were still pretty badass regardless, and I actually wish that there was more, and that is my 
criticism with the game. And as far as the length, how I said the game was too long, it probably would have felt better or more consistent if there was bosses earlier in the thing. Because I think what made it drag on or feel like it's longer is the amount of time that it got to take to get to a final boss. But with that being said, I think that's pretty much all of my negatives and all of my positives. Uh, something that I wanted to talk about really quick here on the channel, my thoughts on this game. So what I want to know from you guys is what you guys think of this game. Are my criticisms valid? Are they not valid? Leave construction criticism. Uh, uh, criticisms down below because I legitimately want to hear what you guys think if you guys disagree with me I want to know that too and let's have a nice little conversation in the in the comment section down below but with that being said thank you guys for watching don't forget to drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and definitely hit that notification bell because every single time I drop a video here on the channel that is the only time YouTube will notify you when a new video is published if you hit that notification bell so with that being said i'll definitely be catching you guys in the next video deuces